This IB uh, business management video is going to show you how to construct a balance sheet. So in considering a balance sheet, all it is is a document that states the business's assets. So in other words, uh, what the company owns, its liabilities, so what the company owes in terms of its financial obligations. And finally, the owner's equity, so the means of how to, uh, I suppose, operate as a business in terms of its financial means. And a balance sheet is, is, is often used to calculate and to understand and recognise the liquidity of a business. So I selected uh, an old IB pass paper question in case study uh, based on AH Limited. I'll give you uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes. So if you want to pause the video and just read the case study. So the questions based on this video are the following. Uh, three market would be to use the information provided from AHLTD's accounts and prepare a balance sheet um, as of the 31st of March 2014. Now the second question and the final question is uh, the more complex one because what it's stating is um, the first balance sheet is, is the basic generic balance sheet without considering any other factors. And one of the key factors that you need to consider within a balance sheet is obviously depreciation, especially in terms of assets. So um, the, the second question, the third question asks you to calculate the balance sheet with uh, the reducing balance method of depreciation, which we'll look at also. So if I just go back to the financial information, and what the question is asking you is to look at all this financial information and to create a, a, a simple balance sheet based on this. So that's what we'll do to start off with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the, uh, the company's assets. I'm going to break the assets down into two. I'm going to look at their non-current assets. So the assets that they, um, they possess, that they have no intention of turning into cash and um, in the near future and then finally the current assets which could be in cash or they do plan on converting to cash in within the, within this year so if we look at the non-current assets first and we consider equipment and land and building and actually fixed assets are the same as uh, non-current assets so the case has been quite generous here and actually told you so in terms of equipment the reason why the business has no intention of, of converting to cash straight away is because obviously they need the equipment to produce uh, whatever good or service that they are carrying out. And obviously the same goes for land and building. So if we put this initially in our in our balance sheet, so the beginning of our balance sheet has our fixed assets, equipment uh, 1.5 million, buildings 9 million and our total fixed assets 10.5 million. So now I'm going to look at the uh, the other type of assets and I'm going to look at the the current assets. So they've already had um, they've already had something converted into cash. So they've got uh, the current asset of cash of 0.1. Uh, they've also got a uh, debtors of 0.2. Remember debtors is when the business has issued trade credits to a customer and they are still awaiting payment. So they are hoping that once the payment has been made, then that's obviously been converted into cash. So they've actually only got two current assets of cash and debtors equating to 0.3. So let's add that to our balance sheet. So we've got total fixed assets of 10.5 and total current assets of uh, 0.3. Now a common mistake that I have seen from students is that they accidentally mistake creditors and debtors. Just remember creditors is when you've requested a trade credit and you still have to make that payment. And debtors is where you have debtors and therefore you are waiting for them to make the payment. So the debtors is your current asset because it'll be, it will be converted into cash. Whilst creditors, as it's a financial obligation, it will be a current liability. The reason why it's current is because the, the, uh, the supplier will expect you to make the payments uh, pretty quickly once you've received the goods or the resources. 
Now you can do total assets if you wanted to, uh, you don't have to. I'm going to just go straight on to current liabilities now. Now they only have uh, one current liability of creditors of 0.8. However, if you compare their, um, their current liability situation of 0.8 to their current assets of 0.3, you can already start to see issues with this business's balance sheet especially in terms of liquidity, which I'll look at uh, once the balance sheet is complete. And if we consider the, um, the non-current liabilities, so the liabilities that they are expected to pay in the future, probably because of uh, the amount and the agreement that they've got, um, maybe from, for example, banks, etc., then um, That'll be the difference between your current liabilities and your non-current. But in this in this scenario, in this situation, there isn't actually any non-current liabilities. So what we can do now is we can uh, we can weigh up our um, our total net situation. And remember, net just means the difference. So to calculate our net total, what I recommend first is you consider the uh, the current total or the current net sorry so what you should look at is the current assets are 0.3 the current liabilities are 0.8 so there's obviously a negative 0.5 if we have a look at the fixed assets so you 10.5 and then you minus your your net current you should be left with a net total of 10 million now to make sure that um, this is correct what you can also do is you can also have a look at the equity because the equity should balance out, it should be the exact same as your net. So let's have a look at the uh, the mediums or the, the, uh, the types of uh, investment that has gone into the business to help pay for its assets and its liabilities. So the, the trick here, to know that it's equity, uh, have a look at in terms of capital. So that it's the loan capital and that's why it's equity. Now if it was a loan repayments, uh, depending if it was a short-term loan or a long-term loan, then that would fall into your liabilities. But the loan capital is the money that goes into the business to help fund it. So the loan capital is four million. The retained profit is is again a, a method uh, retained, reinvested back into the business to help it operate. And finally, share capital, which is the most common type of equity, uh, especially with retained profit. And again, capital. So the the income from selling shares is at four million. Uh, that's a total 10 million and it balances out with a net total of 10 million. So you get your three marks for doing what I've just done there. I'm going to add a little bit more. Uh, the, the, the exam question doesn't ask for this, but I'm just going to show you what their current liquidity picture is via the current ratio. I can't do the acid test ratio uh, simply because I haven't got an understanding of uh, their stock levels uh, or the, the value of their stock as it's not within the information, but I can do their current ratio. So I'm going to do that now. So for my current ratio, I've, I've had the current assets divided by uh, the current liabilities and I've got a current ratio of 0.38. Now you can show this as a ratio and um, that's absolutely fine, but you can just show it as a decimal as well. So what this tells me is that for every $1 of liabilities, of current liabilities, their financial obligations that they have to pay off, they've only got 38 cents to pay it off in terms of assets. So that tells you that this this um, this business has serious liquidity problems. At, the, at this moment in time, in their current situation, they do not have enough current assets to pay off their current liabilities. So this, this is a serious issue for the business and uh, the business would probably have to dip into their, uh, their non-current assets and maybe maybe sell off some of their fixed assets, uh, which again would go against the productivity of the business. So there is, there is a worry there. In terms, of, in terms of this information as well, what else you could calculate? Again, the question doesn't ask you, but you could also calculate the capital employed. So I'll do that now as well. Now, there's two ways of calculating your capital employed. And within this situation, it's, it's, it's ridiculously easy. And the reason for that is because it's got nothing, to, uh, it's got no non-current liabilities. So one method of calculating capital employed is what you could do is you could add up your total assets 
in terms of your fixed assets and your current assets and then just simply minus your non-current liabilities and that's within this situation we've already done that because the net is that because there's no non-current liabilities so it's 10 million or the other method of doing it is you could get your equity and you could add your non-current liabilities but again there is no non-current liabilities so their equity is 10 million plus zero therefore obviously it's 10 million so the capital being employed within this company is 10 million now why would you need to know capital employed is because you could then use it with profitability inf um, information so for example if there's a case study with an income statement and you knew the firm's profitability then you could use the capital employed as well as the profitability to calculate return on capital employed now let's have a look at the next couple of questions based on depreciation So the question in terms of depreciation, it says using the reducing balance method of depreciation, calculate the total de depreciation charge on the equipment purchased three years ago. Now you find you need to find out the reducing balance, uh, balance sorry, percentage, and that'll be that will be in your case study. So if we have a look at the case study, we can see uh, just here in terms of Mark was informed Jose that the equipment should be depreciated using the reducing balance method at a rate of 40 percent a year so it's giving you that depreciation rate what in which we'll use for those three years go back and i'll just do it underneath so the um the equipment costs 1.5 million and using the dep the depreciation rate uh of 40 percent all you simply do is uh, change that 40 percent into a decimal and you do your 1.5 million times by 0.4 and you get 600,000. Now for year two, what you do is you get your 1.5 million and you mine it, minus it by the 600,000 to get your year two rate. So now we know in year two, the equipment is worth 900,000. But obviously we need to know what it'll be worth in year three. So we, we just do again the 40% depreciation rate. So we do 900,000 times by 0.4. And that would be 360,000. So for year three, we simply do our 900,000 minus our 360,000 to find out what the equipment would be worth. So this would be what it uh, would it be, sorry, uh, at the beginning of year three, but we also need to know how much is depreciated um, throughout year three, because the question does ask for uh, three years ago. So we do it one more time and we do our 0.4 times by 540,000 and this will give us our final amount. So our final answer, you get a 40% depreciation rate of 216,000 minus that from year three. And at the end of year three, the final answer would be $324,000. So we can see if we add up all those depreciation rates, you roughly get they're along the lines of uh, one seven six four okay so um it's quite a high amount now just remember in terms of the reducing balancing method um the reason why you carry this one out maybe over the straight line what method is because it's probably more realistic the straight line method is quite generic it it, it just assumes that it'll be the same rate every single year uh, but that could be quite unrealistic. But at the same time, you just have to remember the reducing balance method of depreciation is still just a forecast. It's just a prediction. So again, it's not accurate. So the final question asks you to now update the balance sheet based on this. Now we know the, um, the balance sheet is going to be impacted, especially in terms of the fixed assets and the equipment, because the equipment is not worth um the 1.5 million anymore okay so what we do is we'd show it in our fixed assets and that would impact our net total it would also be seen as a cost to the business and because it's a cost to the business it'll also hurt the retained profit of the business so what you should find is it should balance out and your total equity and your total current assets should still be the same hence why it's called a balance sheet so let's let's put this into practice i'm just going to simply edit the balance sheet on the right hand side, uh, but just with a different colour just to show you how it would look. So 
so to start off with, you can see the equipment is now 324,000. So we've got um, the total fixed assets of 9.324. And then that will impact our net, uh, our net total because um, the net total should be much less because of that. So we can see it's at 8.824. So now we need to consider equity and we need to look at retained profit. So if we find out our total depreciation rate, which we did at 1.176 with 600,000 added to 360,000 added to 216,000, then we, we subtract that because that's now a cost. So we subtract that from our profit and we get a 0 0.824. Now if you add uh, your four um, for loan capital plus your share capital of four, that's eight, add that to your 0 0.824 new figure for retained profit, you'll get the same total of 8.824. I hope that's helped. Um, any questions, just let me know on the YouTube channel. Thank you.